listening to YouTube one night, I found this. This is nice. I think the YouTube algo recommended me Joey because I'm subscribed to DJ Smokey since they got a few good songs together. This sent me down a deep rabbit hole of listening to some really top quality underground rap, which took me back to 2015. Really good era where every side of the scene had a really good catalog of so much good music. This is where Joey gets it right. In today's music scene, it's more difficult than ever to create a sound that sounds nostalgic, yet is up to date and doesn't sound like a try hard attempt to fit into today's music machine, or even worse, just like another artist. There's a certain air to the whole scene involving Joey, Marlon Dubois, and Shed Theory, which, yes, Joey did indeed put me on. Let's jump straight into this vocal mixing tutorial, which is pretty straightforward. So let's go. I smell Right, so the first thing we need to focus on is the style that we're going for in terms of vocal tone. So here is the main vocal without any plugins on, just so you can get an idea of what the raw sound sounds like. Find me in a mall, polo rugby, no scrimmage It's a different type of car, they didn't really got a limit I'm still rolling blue cheese, eating steak with cream spinach Forgot what's in my cup, but I really can't spill it Wow, rockstar man Right, this is kind of like a monotone, melodic, you know uh, Anything that'll fit really well over these types of beats Okay, this is what it sounds like with the effects on Find me in a mall, polo rugby, no scrimmage It's a different type of car, they didn't really got a limit I'm still rolling blue cheese, eating steak with cream spinach Forgot what's in my cup, but I really can't spill it Wow, rocks Right, and as you can see, all we're really doing with this whole vocal chain is really emphasizing that kind of melancholy sound The next thing you really need to focus on is obviously the type of beat that you're going to be using You know, this beat in this track is really cool um, it kind of has that, you know, uh, early Sosa sound, right? That Young Chop sound mixed together with the Rip Squad vibe. Um, you know, definitely just find producers you like and, you know, rap over those beats and these vocals are going to gel together really well. I would also say you'd be able to get away with the more melodic Yeet style beats. Um, this obviously has a kind of hint of that. It's kind of more up to date. Uh, you definitely are also going to, you know, benefit from rapping over, for example, you know, some Rip Squad type beats, etc., etc. So definitely find producers you like and then stick to their sound so that you always get a consistent result. Now the next most important thing is definitely going to be your recording setup with plugins, okay? The biggest mistake I see people uh, making when using my templates in particular are recording with all of the plugins on, okay? You don't want to do that. So the most important plugins that I like to record with are going to be on the main vocal going to be your autotune, right? You definitely want to record into autotune. Um, I recommend once you've imported your beat just to spend 5-10 minutes kind of humming uh, into a microphone or just freestyling or something just so you can find that tone that you want and then stick to that for the rest of the mix. You can adjust obviously the retune speed if it's maybe dragging a little bit too much but the closer you get it to that end result the better it's going to sound. I mean for example I added in 4 Humanize just to really smooth out the vocal and I've got 7 retune speed uh, with low male obviously because we're going for that really cool kind of you know laid back vibe okay. So definitely find your correct autotune settings. If you do need compression, um, you know, something like the R compressor is going to be good to leave on. Definitely turn off everything else other than, for example, the R compressor and then a little bit of um, SSL EQ, okay? Um, I added these in when I was ready to mix. We'll talk about that just now. But I had no uh, EQ going on besides this uh, 3K boost. 0.6 dB is really not much and then a little bit of an 8K boost, just to really kind of lift up the vocal and, you know, to give me an idea of what the, the vocal would sound like kind of punching through the mix, but I really didn't do anything aggressive, okay? Nothing else really was on besides this air flanger, okay? So that's a really good tip, you know, record with just a basic compressor and basic EQ, just so you can really focus in on making sure that that raw recording sounds good. You know, when you start adding in all sorts of crazy EQ and things like that um, while recording, A, you're going to confuse yourself, but B, you're not really going to be hearing an accurate representation of what your recordings sound like. So definitely, you know, set that up. Uh, with these templates, you can get really great results, especially if you are, for example, recording your main vocals first. You know, the ad-libs, I definitely leave with all the crazy effects on, right? As you can see, I got this cool chain right here. I just record straight into those because, you know, I can immediately hear what that 
background sound is gonna sound like, okay? So try that out. Now we're gonna get straight into our mix breakdown. Um, you know, as you can see, we got this whole crazy vocal chain right here. Sounds really cool if we just kind of go somewhere. You can't spill it. Wow, rockstar, man, mess. Swear I blew up, cause my money keep expanding. I'll, I'll be out of space with my poison in the car. Right, it's just kind of really sitting in that beat. It sounds really good. Joey has a really cool uh, way of doing things, you know. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to kind of, in a in a way, you know, emulate that without copying that in a way, right? You know, the the whole goal here is not to just become a photocopy of your favorite artist. It's to really kind of, you know, take in that sound, right? Because this was inspired from somewhere, right? And and so the cycle goes, right? So the first thing I do, um, or the first in plugin that I have on this chain is going to be this frequency splitter. I've recently upgraded to FL21. I really like it. Uh, it's very stable. It runs well. A little bit high on CPU, but this frequency splitter has a really nice preset. Um, I think it was the steep 30 hertz cut, and then I just made it um, less steep. So I've, I've got it at 24 dB, so it emulates, you know, kind of analog more. Um, the sharper you go, the, the more digital it sounds and the more kind of, um, you know, uh, you can really hear, you know, high passing. You don't want to hear that, right? So I put it at 24, and then I've just rolled it off at about 90 hertz, right? That way I'm going to get rid of all that mud, all of that proximity effect, because when you are recording a song like this, you're definitely going to want to be nice and close to the mic, just so you can really get that upfront raspiness. Um, you know, roll that off, and that's good to go. And then I'm blending that together with the Farai's Vocal Enhancer. You can check this out, link in the description. I'm pretty much just using the first preset, which I really like, which is going to be Farai's Tube Console. And all it's really doing is a little bit of EQ just to really kind of emulate analog on your microphone. Okay, and then I'm just using a little bit of uh, input drive, which is a little bit of saturation distortion. And then I just turn the input gain or the output gain down to taste, okay? And as you can see, that gives me a really nice sound. So if I turn off these... But I really can't spend it. Wow, rock star, man, mess. Swear I blew up. Right, that's all there, but we don't have that really nice analog sound. But I really can't spend it. Wow, rock star, man, mess. Swear I blew up. Right, we can really pronounce any frequencies um, in our vocal that we want, okay? Just using this Fry's Vocal Enhancer. So really cool, okay? The next thing again, you know, EQ, you just want to get rid of all of the bass in your vocal. I like to cut it 200 and 200 on an SSL style EQ. Really works. I did talk about this EQ earlier. Um, not using any de-essing. Um, just record kind of away from the mic whenever you've got really harsh sounds. Add that drip, add that swag in there. And then after that, I add in a little bit of more additive EQ and as you can see I'm just adding in a 2k and then a 20k just a little bit of high end and tri and, and mid-range just to really kind of emphasize that raspiness of the vocal right um, and as you can see I'm doing a little cut at 107 because I really didn't like um, that frequency range if I just boost this for you but I really can't spend it wow rock star man very minimal stuff. This is almost like a mastering EQ on your vocal, okay? After that, a little bit of compression. And as you can see, I'm really just compressing the vocal down so that any loud parts aren't too, you know, like sticking out, right? I really don't want certain parts of words to pop out. It makes vocals hard to listen to. FL21 is really cool that you can actually uh, clip gain your vocals like in Pro Tools. As you can see, I've really taken some time to just clip gain and boost and cut uh, loud and soft parts of the vocal. Okay, it's a really nice way to work. Definitely do that first, just so you know the loudest parts are dealt with, you know, and then you can use a compressor just to clamp down everything. So if you want to see how much compression we're doing. But I really can't spend it. Wow, rock star, man, mess. Swear I blew up, cause my money keep expanding. Uh, and as you can see, can you notice how loud parts get compressed, but nothing else really gets compressed. That to me is good compression okay now i've done two stages of compression i use an analog compressor so you can copy this over to here and then just have a compressor insert there i do have one set up on the previous t version that's why it's there for those who use the templates just to act you know two stages of compression but by this stage you don't want to be compressing too much otherwise you're really going to be killing off some of the wonderful detail that we've introduced into our vocal okay so this is really just a nice glue compressor it's not doing much more than 4 db of compression you know, use the output gain just to get that gain up, okay? And then we got these three effects right here, which are just um, some space effects. If you really want that, you know, glissy, 
glamorous, you know, we're going to use Joey's word right here, glitzy sound. You want to add in a few effects, right? So as you can see, I got a reverb. I got this brand new vintage chorus, which I really like. It might actually replace um, the Fruity Flangus after all these years. Really cool. These are the presets I'm using. And then I'm just, um, you know, blending that in together with this air flange. And I really just add on a little bit of secret sauce onto our vocal. But I really can't spill it. Wow. Rockstar, man, the mess. Swear I blew up because my money keep expanding. Okay. Right if I turn that on. But I really can't spill it. Wow. Rockstar, man, the mess. Swear I blew up. It's very minimal, but... If you're really listening closely, you can hear that it smooths off the top end and then the reverb is adding in a little bit of kind of mid-range width. Okay, this is really, um, you know, where we can get that width from. So really cool, easy to do, you know, um, background stuff, you know, you can just add reverbs and things like that. Copy paste your auto-tune, it's all set up for you in this template. Um, we got some really cool stuff going on. But other than that, we got a few effects in, which I won't get into, I can do a full video on that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I do in terms of the mix. So once we've done everything, obviously this is our final result. And there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely check out the preset link in the description. Up your game. Uh, we do include a free VST version. So if you don't have access to all of these uh, paid plugins, you can just get going using free and stock plugins. For anything that I feel um, you may want a third party plugin, there is a download link in the description for, for some really cool um you know what I mean? Free stuff. So definitely check that out. If you want to learn more about my process, definitely check out the links to my vocal recording course. If you want to learn how to record vocals like a pro in FL Studio, um, it will help for any door. So if you just want to learn more, definitely check that out. We also have uh, a link to my vocal mixing course where you can learn more about my process. And if you really want to get into it, you can learn mastering as well. We do have a brand new course that just dropped. But nonetheless, hope you had a good time. Hope you learned something. Stay tuned for the next video, comment below which artists you'd like me to cover, and we'll get to it. Peace out.